is I'm going to take a piece of 220 uh, sandpaper in a foam sanding block and with the tape still on I'm going to go around and I'm going to scuff up the perimeter of that frame so that way that pinch weld primer has something uh, nice to stick to. I got the surface all wiped down. I've reapplied my tape along the ghosted line that was still left. And you can see in the corners here, I actually used multiple pieces of tape. I couldn't get the contours just right. Um, but the biggest thing is to make sure that this line, this inside line right here that's gonna be on the paint line is as sharp as possible and push down fully.
Same thing up in the top corner. Just use multiple pieces, small pieces, and just work my way around it. Not a perfect job, but again, I'm not a body guy and I don't have professional um, uh, lining tape or paint painting tape. Um, usually the stuff they have is made out of vinyl and it's uh, probably about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch thick so they can run that really nice line and then go back over it with painter's tape and uh, paper. All right, right now I'm applying the uh, Sika Primer 207. Um, it's, a, it's very, very fluid. As you can see, it's dripping right off the brush right there. Um, so you don't need a whole lot on your swab when you're putting it on. Um, just kind of put it, dip it in there, rub it on the edges, kind of wick off the extra or the excess, and it applies very quickly, as you see. Um, just light strokes, and we're just getting that coverage. When you start, when you start to see it streaking and the paint underneath or the metal underneath, that's when you pretty much dab it back in. The other thing you want to make sure when you're doing this is we want to get the bottom edge of this pinch weld as well. And once I'm done with the outside, I'm actually gonna open the hatch and I'm gonna get the backside of that pinch weld. That way we make sure nothing's going to uh, rust in the future. Like I said, it's very fluid, um, very runny. So if you load your brush up or your swab up too much, and you have it hovering over the paint, there is a very good chance that it's gonna get on your paint and it's very difficult to get off once you get it on there. Um, you can use a solvent, but then you risk rubbing the uh, paint off the metal. And we're only gonna need one coat of this. See if we can't get you guys a better view of this while I'm doing it. And if you see a spot that you didn't get covered, don't worry too much about it. Just let it tack up. It dries very fast. And you can always go back over it with the second coat. It's better to do that than over apply or keep scrubbing at it and uh, essentially putting streaks and all that into it. Like right here, you can see I've got a streak here and here. Now it's tacked up, you just go over it lightly and it'll touch all that up. And that's what it should look like. And then here in a minute, I'm gonna open up the tailgate once the outside tacks up. I'm gonna do the inside edge of it. And we'll finish up priming it. Now on the back side of it, there's not a whole lot that I'm going to do. Really all I'm going to do is go along and touch up that rail or the pinch weld. Um, here you need to be super, super careful since the uh, tailgate is now open. We're just going to get in here and just touch up the rest of this rail here. Look for any spots where we might see any type of rust or anything like that. And if we do, we'll just hit it with some sandpaper real quick. and prime over it, but I just want to get this pinch weld as best we can here. Again, this is going to be covered by the seal, so nobody's ever going to see this.
and here you want as little as possible on your brush um, because we're just doing such a small area. All right, so now that the pinch well primer is set up, I've torn the tape in the center and I'm gonna start removing it and we're gonna pull at a sharp angle, try to leave as much of that edge intact as possible. some bleed through on my tape so probably what I'm going to end up doing is coming in here with some solvent and a cotton swab and just trying to lightly take off the bleed through. That way I try not to disturb the paint as much as possible. Keep in mind that the seal is going to be covering up the majority of this but we'll try to get as much of it off as possible. So what I'm doing now is I'm cleaning up these uh, little stringers here and all I have is a little bit of acetone on a cotton swab and we're just taking them off one at a time. Got some sitting in the cup right here or in a lid. Just nice light strokes. Just like that. And I'm gonna continue doing that around the edges here. Anywhere it's gonna stick past the seal. Now, I know it's gonna stick past the seal right here and right here. So all I'm gonna do is clean up the edges of that. Um, but I already knew that that was gonna do that because that those rust spots were visible from underneath the seal before. So like I said, I'm just gonna go along and clean all this up with a cotton swab and some acetone. All my edges here, like I said, they're not 100% perfect, but the seal is going to be covering that and don't have any long stragglies or anything like that hanging off the sides that the seal is not going to cover obviously except for that point there and that point right there which I'll probably just hit, hit with some touch up paint. So the next step after this is going to be cleaning all the urethane off of the glass. To clean the urethane off the glass we're going to use Windex and one of these straight razors. I'm just going to spray the uh, Windex onto the glass, lubricate it, and then just use a razor blade just like that. What the Windex does is it lubricates the glass with the soapy solution and it prevents the razor from actually scratching it. This works very well for taking off vinyl decals or any type of uh, bumper stickers or different types of stickers that you put on your back glass, your side glass too. So 
So as you can see, takes it off, little pieces like that, and we're gonna work our way around the rest of the glass and then we'll get it ready to uh, put in the gasket and get it installed back in the truck. One thing I should probably point out too is that I'm doing the outside of the glass. That's where the urethane is stuck to. Do not take a razor blade to the inside of the glass because a lot of these have a laminated tint on the uh, inside of them and you'll take that off or you'll destroy it or scratch it. The other thing is, is this heater grid right here um, for your rear defrost. Basically, you've got power coming in from one side going to the other side and that's how it defrosts or heats the rear window. If you break any of these lines of contact with that razor blade, your defroster will not work anymore and you'll see a big gap um, when, you, when you try to use it the first cold day. So do not put the razor blade on the back side of the glass, only use it on the front side of the glass. Now that we have all the urethane removed from the glass, uh, next thing we're going to do is just go over the edges here, clean it all up, make sure that we have all of our fingerprints and everything else off of it. And then we're actually going to put a coat of primer around the edge. Um, I wasn't originally going to do this because I was going to continue to use a Sika, a Sika Flex product. However, none of my local auto parts stores actually carry it. So I ended up going down to Napa and picking up some 3M, 3M windshield urethane. Um, and in the directions for that urethane, it actually says to apply primer to the glass. So I'm going to use the same Sika 207 primer that we used on the uh, hatch. But I'm just going to run it around the perimeter of the glass here. That way the urethane does have a place to stick. Um, I kind of went back and forth on whether or not I was actually going to use the urethane um, as I stated earlier in the video and ultimately I just decided it'd probably be the best bet just because of the condition of the metal on the rear hatch and if I'm going to put it there then I might as well seal the glass into the seal as well uh, like the factory service manual kind of instructed me anyway so we're going to go ahead and do that and also you know it gives you guys that have the later model Land Cruisers with the airbags a good idea of how it actually, um, how the glass actually does get installed and how to apply the urethane sealant. All right, so with the glass wiped down like that, we're gonna take our Sika Primer 207 again, and we're going to go around the edge here of the glass. And you can tape this off. I'm gonna try to be really careful and just basically get the very edge of it as I work my way around. And um, I guess if anything, if I get any extra on it after the seal's installed and the glass is installed, I can always go around and um, scrape it back off the razor blade and a little bit of a uh, Windex. The bottom edge and the top edge aren't that hard to figure out where the uh, primer needs to go because it's got that strip for the uh, rear defrost. It's mainly the sides that you got to kind of gauge the depth a little bit, um, which should still be all right. That side looks like it still has it. Um, the passenger side over here doesn't look like it has so much of a defined edge, so we'll have to be a little bit more careful with this side here. So you can see it's not exactly perfect, but what we basically did was just went around the edge of it, all the way around. And then I also made sure that I brought the brush down on this edge right here to get the outside perimeter of the glass as well. So that way when we put the sealant on it, 
um, it'll, it'll bond to that primer and basically hold the glass into the seal. Um, and it'll be a little bit more apparent once you guys see me actually pump the sealant into it or pump the urethane into it. Um, basically the glass is going to go in now with the seal. Um, and then after the glass and the seal are installed into the back hatch, we're going to then apply the urethane. It's a little counterintuitive, but it'll make sense once we do it. All right, so now we're putting the seal onto the glass and we're starting with the two lower corners. Um, they are the most important because they actually have a molded curve built into the seal here. It's actually an extra piece that's been bonded in. The rest of it's just a regular seal that kind of loops around it. So these are the most important because the corners kind of have to be centered um, to fit properly in the hatch. So I've put the two corners on, kind of got the seal centered that way. And now I'm just working my way down the seal, working towards it from this corner down to this corner. And I'm basically pushing up on the seal and I'm using a, a Bondo squeegee or Bondo trowel. And you stick that inside the seal, pull it up on top of the glass and work back to where you, you left off. And then you just kind of push the seal on with your hand and you lift the seal up over the glass with the, uh, the scraper or the uh, trowel. And that allows you to get that up on there without damaging the primer and make sure the seal's sitting where it's supposed to be sitting. It's a little bit of a bear, but it's not too, too bad. There the bottom edge of the seal is on, and then we'll just continue working our way around the rest of it. Now at this point, the seal is gonna get really tight on this corner. So we're gonna try to pull as much slack as we can, and then we're gonna pull the seal up, lip it over, and then use our Bondo trowel or plastic wedge and just kind of feed that edge up over the top of it. Once you get the seal on, it should look just like that. Notice you can't see any of the primer that I put on the glass. Seal sitting flush, there's no wavy lines in it. And the corners are about the same on both sides. So now we just have to put the rope in the back of the seal and we should be able to put it in the truck. So the cord that we're going to be using to put this in is 3 16 inch diamond braid nylon rope. It's Blue Hawk. I bought this at Lowe's. I think it was, I don't know, five bucks, six bucks, something like that. Um, and that's what we're going to use to rope the glass in. If you look at the seal, the glass is upside down right now. So we're looking at the inside of the glass. This is the outer seal. This is the weather seal, and then this channel right here, as I open that up, that's where we're gonna actually feed the rope into, and we're gonna tuck the rope all the way around the glass, um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that here in just a second. Now that the rope is tucked in the seal all the way around, this is a very important step. So these are where the two ends meet. What we're going to do is we're going to cross them. 
It doesn't make the difference which way they cross as long as they cross. Um, and we're going to tuck that rope in under that one for a little ways here. And we're going to do the same thing in the other direction. Just like that. All right. Now that's there. I'm going to take a good section of this. Cut that. Make me a loop in the end of this. Same thing with the other side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape. Gather all this up. And this will just make it easier for lifting the glass in there and the rope not getting in the way when we're when we're installing it. And then I can climb through the inside of the truck and grab a hold of them and start pulling on it. All right, so we're getting ready to put the glass in. We're going to spray the truck with some soapy solution. In this case, we're just using Windex, just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing with the glass, all the way around it. Make sure that we get that seal nice and wet. sitting flush in there right now because we're, we're going to work on it as we go but you're going to have to pull down on it as I pull the uh, rope seal or the rope out of the seal okay yep and we actually need to come a little bit to the passenger side right there let up a little bit okay, let's try that <coughs> ready yeah Just tell me when to start pushing down. Okay. Take that lock knob off of here quick. Grab our ropes. Okay, go ahead and push down. Like in the center? Yeah, just pull straight down. Okay, I am. Uh, can you pull harder down? Can I use both hands? Yes, you can. Just be careful. Okay, hang on a second. Let me come out there and give you a hand. Do you want me to pull the rope? Uh, I might have to. We'll see here. Yeah, go in there and just slowly pull the rope um, one at a time and go like two, three inches and then go to the other one, two, three inches. Do you care which one I start with? Nope. Okay, hang on. Now, does it look like the seal's lifting over it? I mean, I can push it down. Okay. 
Okay, keep going. It's lipping over the metal. Is that what you want? Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Okay. Okay, keep going. Hold on, I gotta get in more. Ow. I'm gonna go to this side. Okay. Yeah, hang on now. When you get closer to the corner here, I gotta push in on it. Okay. Do you want me to go around the corner or do you want to get them both even and then do a corner at a time? Um, hold to like right here. Okay, that's good. And then we'll go over to the other side, get that one seam, and then we'll do a corner at a time. So right now as she's pulling that, I'm pulling down on the glass and I'm pushing in on the corner. Okay. Okay, keep going with that one. Around the... Yep. All right, well, hold on. You gotta kind of pull pull up at an angle. Yeah, because I, I got to get, get it really around tight. that lip. Yep. Okay, hold on. It's coming. I know. I can see it. <laughs> I got to get it up in an angle. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's up and around, right? Uh, yeah, it's barely on this plastic cover here. Okay, pull it just a little bit more and then we'll go to the other side. Do you want me to go up here to the wire? Just come to like right here. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. I think. I think. The problem is that we're not fully down, though, I think. Uh, hopefully it'll pull in further with the, this corner. This corner's almost already. Yeah, see, this one was. I know, but the, what I'm saying is the glass up here. Okay. Well, once I get this one up, you come in here and look. Okay. That's good. Okay. I'll come hold that. You come in here. What I'm saying is this up here, though. We're way too high. Oh, okay. So, just pull oh. down that. Let's see what we can do. Okay. All right, yeah, let's keep going with that. Look at this side before you get out for me, because it's barely covering the plastic piece. Yeah, I see it. Uh, push in. Right here? Yeah. This side? side. Ready? Okay. You pushing? Yeah, I know. All right, we're gonna need some more soap here. Okay, 
Let's go to this corner over here. Yeah, I know it's gonna get really tight now because it's gonna be trying to force the whole glass down. Yeah. Where are you at? I'm on the middle. Okay, let's get the like right here. Mm. And I'm almost. Yep. Yep. Ugh. Okay, right there's good. Stop. Okay. Okay. What I'm gonna do is work this bottom seal around here, get it out from underneath that lip. Because as you pull that through the top, it's going to want to, um, it's going to want to pull the whole glass down, and that should bring this down to where it needs to be. Should bring it down. This up around this. Can. All right, let me get back up here, get some more soap in here, and then we'll get that other side. Okay, you ready? Okay, hang on. Keep going. Hold on. Yep. It's not, it's not grabbing. All right, give me one second. And I don't want to keep pulling it. That's fine, let me come in there and look at it. There's about an inch where it's not grabbing all. It's just barely grabbing. It's right past the curve. That's it. Okay. Do you need me to push? Yes. Alright. Hold on, I gotta stand up. Ready? Do you want anything? Do you want me to pull? Well, is it pushing in? Yeah. Okay. Where are you at? Right it's here. The spot you were at. Okay. Go. Okay. Stop. Okay. 
Go to the other side. Yep. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Make sure you're pulling downward. Yeah. The rope is all wet too. Yeah, I know it is. You want me to pull them together? Yeah, if you can. Okay. Or if it's easier just to work one side over to the other, that's fine too. Well, they're within a couple inches of each other. They're what? had the seat the rest of the way in so we were having a little bit of a problem with the inside corner right here and right here and that's mainly because when you when you lift the ceiling down here at the bottom the whole glass is going to have a tendency to stick upward um, and as you're roping it in you have to pull tension downward and you also have to make sure you're following the rope from the outside by pushing inward on the glass that way you're making sure that that seal actually lifts around the pinch seal um, so that's kind of where we were fighting um, right now as you can see it's looped around the top and the sides really well but this outer seal right here isn't flipped out all the way you can see it's kind of bowed in right there so what i'm going to do is walk around it with this again and we're going to lift this underneath the seal like this just gonna come around and drag. And make sure that this seal lifts out like it's supposed to, all the way around the glass. Just like that. And I'm gonna continue going around the rest of the glass that way. And then I'm probably gonna come back and push down on the seal as well. Uh, to make sure that it's fully sealed up against the body. All right, with the glass roped in and the seal uh, corrected down here at the bottom, just gonna clean this all off, wipe it all down, including the body. And then I'm gonna let this set up for about 24 hours because I wanna make sure that the Windex completely evaporates um, out of the channel and out of the seal before I try to put the urethane sealant in it. Because um, urethane, if there's anything wet in there or any type of residue on it whatsoever, it's just not going to adhere to the body or to the glass. So we're going to let this set up overnight and then hopefully tomorrow it'll be warm enough outside that we can, uh, we can pump the urethane in. And when we go to pump the urethane in, basically we're going to shove the nozzle in here. We're going to put a small bead all the way around the inside between the seal and the glass. And then we're going to lift the outside seal and we're going to pump it in all the way around the outside that way it bonds the seal to the body and the seal to the glass so we'll uh, finish cleaning this up and we'll like i said we'll probably get back to this tomorrow and try to get that urethane in there